So, right after finishing recording the latest episode of Broken Silicon with Paul from Not an Apple Fan, I received a pretty insane anonymous set of information supposedly about Big Navi from a source I don't believe I've been in contact with before. And one thing I am sure of is that right when I saw it, I just got the feeling it was fake. You know, uh, I really do think that AMD and NVIDIA, as I say in the newest episode of Broken Silicon that will come out in a couple of days, are just intentionally sending out a bunch of misinformation because they do not want each other to know exactly what their top performance will be because it's going to be close. I do think this is going to be the most competitive graphics competition this fall than we, that we've seen honestly in my entire lifetime and after we look at it i will tell you why or why not i think it isn't or is real but let's stop wasting time there's just a few slides let's look at them now the first thing i'm going to show you is just the estimated rasterization performance which you see here is a 6900 xt being compared to the 2080 ti it is on average right where I thought it would be. But then again, plenty of people can come to the same estimated numbers based on previous information just like me. So this doesn't really prove anything. But yeah, I mean, this would be exciting if the 6900 XT, which I think there will be a 6950 XT, was indeed on average what looks to be about 40% better than the 2080 Ti. And if we move on, I will now show you the ray tracing. And Honestly, similar to what I heard in my Ampere leak, the performance hit from turning ray tracing on is minimal. It's 10% at most. Actually, on here, it was 9% at most, meaning that, yes, there will be a FPS hit if you activate ray tracing, but as long as it's not insane full real-time global illumination, it should just feel like almost nothing and give you a free boost. Just like, again, I said Ampere would be. And honestly, what Mark Cerny was talking about with the PlayStation 5. Now, if we go to the final slide, we can see that the 6900 XT, well, this is what I was sent. $1,000, 80 compute units is rumored, 14 gigabytes of GDDR6 at that bandwidth. That would suggest a 448-bit bus. And... Yep, around PS5 clock speeds for at least this iteration. Although, again, I believe there could be a 6950 XT that boosts even higher. And that's it. That's all the slides I was sent. I have heard reference that there will probably be three to four models of the top Navi die. And that looked like just one of them. And probably, although, again, I'm not 100% sure, the second tier from the top. So not the very top one, but not the bottom one either. And if it's true, it honestly lines up pretty much exactly with what I expected. Very top Navi being at least 50% better than the 2080 Ti, but not necessarily beating Ampere, if my Ampere information is true. And I'm aware there is conflicting Ampere info out there. I'll get to that at the end of this video. And honestly, at $1,000, again, if true, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. I expect the 3080 Ti to possibly be slightly cheaper than the 2080 Ti. In other words, $1,000 instead of $1,200. And this would compete right about up there with a slightly cut down GA102, I think and at around the same price with impressive ray tracing performance and an included liquid cooler. Uh, and then, of course, there might be a top, top one, maybe one with some insane amount of, like, you know, 28 gigabytes, or maybe there's a full 512-bit version that's 32 gigabytes in that. That's meant to compete with the 3090. That would explain why NVIDIA wants to call it the 3090, because, again it might only be about 10, 20% better and AMD might have more RAM. So though they just don't want to release a Titan unless the Titan is way stronger than AMD because it would hurt the brand image. And again, maybe NVIDIA is bringing out some other Titan, some GA101. Again, we're getting into rampant speculation though. We need to talk about if I think this is real. Honestly, when I look at these slides, my gut reaction is that this is fake. And... I could go into, I'm sure, a thousand reasons why if I spent hours looking at it. You know, maybe I'd mention the aliasing of the text or the fact that the gray bars are different shading. That is weird. But frankly, I would say those mistakes are things that don't really surprise me if this is real. This is probably an early slide before going into the final version. And I've seen spelling mistakes and even 
spec mistakes in final press briefing. So eh, I don't know that I think any of that is something to confirm this is fake. Uh, but I do have my own set of personal reasons I think it may be, and I want to get into them. The first thing is that I think the physical design just looks way too obvious. It's just a 5700 XT with a Vega liquid cooler attached to it. And it's not really actually the 14 gigabytes on another point here that makes me think this is fake. I actually like weird RAM amounts because I, as I keep reminding you guys, not everything needs to be 192, 256, or 384 bit. NVIDIA and AMD can decide to go with, well, whatever the hell they want. There are 96 bit cards out there and this would just be a 448 bit card. No, one thing that I find weird is the 1,008 gigabyte per seconds of bandwidth. I mean, this is exactly what's in some recent Ampere rumors, and a lot of fake leakers like to take one set of specs and reverse engineer them to make some other fake card from their competitor. That, being the exact same number as NVIDIA, really sticks out to me as a little weird. And then also, another point, if we look at the Radeon branding here, it does actually match the recent leaks that AMD has changed how their logo's uh, font looks, but they're spaced out more. And that's honestly a very intriguing point for me. The fact that it uses the recent leaked, although I guess not technically confirmed, Radeon branding, but that the text is spaced out. In many ways, that actually suggested to me that this is more likely to be real. Not necessarily real, but this would support it being real because, well, look, if, if I was to make a fake slide, you know, I would just use you know, my my photo editor and like highlight and then pick out the text in one chop and then just pull all letters out at once and put it on a fake slide. I wouldn't go through the effort of taking each letter individually. So this to me suggested someone had access to the actual font or the individual letters and space them out to line it up with the overall 6900 XT name. But it's not really conclusive either way, I guess. So let's just get to the final thing, and that is the up to. There wasn't one on this slide. I mean, look at this. Oh, they always put up to, and that's for legal reasons, that they can't confirm every card will hit the exact same number every time. So they have to put up to because some will boost on average a little lower. And this doesn't have it. So yeah, those are my personal reasons for why this looked fake to me. They may not be the same as your reasons, and... Some people I talked to found other ones, and I'm sure you have your own if you're used to analyzing rumors and leaks like this, but I don't know. I guess if we're going to be completely fair, I should play devil's advocate. I should try to construct an argument for why it could still, despite everything I said, be real. First, let's talk about the obvious look of this card. I mean, the fact of the matter is AMD did get roasted for their creative approach to the reference 5700 XT. Most people said it looked like someone had hit it with a pipe. And so maybe AMD just took everyone's advice. Everyone said the 5700 looked nicer. So, you know, why rock the boat? Why not just go with this? And the fact that the liquid cooling, you know, radiator portion with the fan looks similar to previous designs is... Isn't that odd? Additionally, let's talk about the bandwidth number. Well, it's not completely unprecedented that previous cards have the same bandwidth despite having different memory systems. I mean, the Vega 56 had the same bandwidth roughly as the 5700 XT, despite one being HBM2 and one being GDDR6. And you know what? Even the Vega 64 had roughly the same bandwidth as the 1080 Ti. Again, despite being entirely different memory systems, and those were two competing flagships. And I know you might say the Vega 64 wasn't a true flagship. Well, it was AMD's flagship, even if it wasn't close to winning. And so I guess the things that stuck out to me don't conclusively prove it, right? I can construct an argument for either side. Uh, so I guess the last thing to talk about regarding whether this is real or not is the fact that for some reason... It's a 448-bit card with 14 gigabytes and 80 compute units, and yet it's called the 6900 XT. I've seen 6950 XT referenced multiple times. So I guess you might argue, well, they're not calling it the 6950 XT, or maybe the 6950 XT has HBM on it. I mean, after all, my early Big Navi leaks talked about a top die that might have the ability to use GDDR and HBM, or maybe even potentially both at the same time. Maybe that's still true. 
Although, to be honest, the most recent leaks all seem to suggest it's only GDDR6 and consumer version, so I don't know that I see AMD giving an HBM to the very top version, unless, yeah, I don't know, they are just going to call it the 6950 XT and charge $2,000 for it next to the 3090, but I guess maybe they would. And so basically, if this information I received is true, a true product, and this is what it will look like, well, a lot of the info we've received wasn't entirely correct in the past. But that's always the case, isn't it? There's almost always, especially recently from AMD, something different than we expect. And so I guess that gets me to my conclusion. This leak that I was sent is interesting. I think it's probably fake, but I can construct an argument for why it would be real. I mean, I guess the final thing I will say that I didn't mention before is that that up to thing is something that every fake leak I've seen in the past knows to put there. I mean, just look at this WCCF Tech April Fool's joke. They knew to put up to next to it, even though we all knew that was fake. That's an oversight that to me suggests it came from within AMD. That sounds like a fake within AMD mistake to make. And also, let's look at that lettering one more time. I've had it suggested to me that it's weird that the XT version lines up perfectly with it. Why would they do that? But that's what they did with the official press slides of the 5700 and 5700 XT. They were perfectly lined up with the XT, but not with the non-XT. So there's two pieces of information that suggest that the mistakes made might have been made by someone intentionally trying to make this weird who has the correct information. And some of the non-mistakes made, like how they formatted the graphic for the logo next to RX 50 or 6700 XT, suggests to me that might be the actual logo from within AMD. So I guess my official judgment is this is probably fake. If so, AMD put a lot of effort into making this feel like something that's real while still weirdly overlooking a few things that don't tell me it's fake. I don't know. Maybe this is real. I certainly hope so. Well, whether it turns to be real or not, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I especially hope that Many of you gained an appreciation for how much effort some of us tech tubers put into vetting information, right? We don't just, or at least I don't, just spit something out immediately. It's not as easy as some of you seem to think to just send me something and have me just poop it out as quickly as possible. I put a lot of effort in to deciding if this is real or not, and there's enough of weird things in there where I'm like, Let's put this out there, because at the very least, it's fun to analyze this. And so at least this was entertaining, I hope. Now, two more things. Uh, I made this after I recorded the Broken Silicon with Paul. That will come out after this video is live, because of all the audio editing with my audio editor and all the work that goes into uploading that and exporting it. So just keep in mind that we didn't know about this when we were talking about all the various things we talked about. Second... I know Cortex had that transversal co-processor video come out. Of course I watched it. It really didn't surprise me what he showed there. Uh, and I really don't have anything else to say besides that. Uh, I think a lot of people are overestimating how much of his information contradicts mine, right? I said Ampere, based on my leak, should have crazy good ray tracing performance. And a lot of the other things he suggested in there... Um, so I'm not going to try to argue about it. I think uh, half of it actually supports the info I have. Uh, the only thing that really varies is rasterization performance. And frankly, I've talked to another few tech tubers. Everyone's receiving tons of info all of a sudden from both companies. So that's the overall conclusion. Again, of this video, AMD and NVIDIA are conducting espionage. But some of these will be real. Oh, and please subscribe, please share, and please support me on Patreon if you like my content and want to ensure it keeps being made and the quality keeps going up. My patrons are awesome and they really do make all of this possible. All right, thank you for watching.